Hey, it's Kevin from JJ Hat Center. We're going to look at some more Western hats today and some Outback style hats. Outbacks are essentially almost Western. They're kind of like a hat with Western qualities to them. Or uh, somewhere between a fedora, a snap brim, pinch, uh, and a Western. So this is essentially something like that. Uh, it has a safari brim. Safari is a downturn brim. I've got a snap brim on. Fedora's snap down, so you can do the safari thing. You could do the up in the back thing, classic fedora, or you could do the all the way up, kind of modern player, casual thing. With safari, the brim goes down or an out back, and that's it, just down. Um, some people can flip them up when there's a little tension in there, your head's in there, you could get that, but they generally go down and that's it. It's called a downturn brim, a safari brim. It's also tapered at the sides. It's not as long on the sides. So, you know, it's like two inches here and two and a quarter in the front and the back. So it's shaped like an oval. Um, they're meant to go down. So the idea is when you turn it down, it doesn't stick out too much on the sides. That's why they taper it. That's called a dimensional brim. When a brim is not two and a half all the way around, it's two and a half here and here whatever here, maybe two and one eighth or something. Generally it's something like two and five eighths, two and five eighths, two and three eighths, two and three eighths. So it's, you know, like a, an oval. Um, the outbacks can range all sorts of things. They can be big and wide like this, or they can be shorter like this. Uh, I'm going to go over a few popular things. Uh, this is called the High Life. It's a very special, special hat. It's made out of pure beaver. It's 100% beaver fur. I keep, if you notice, every time I touch it, I caress it. Um, I like to feel it. It's really, really soft. It's like one of the softest, softest things you ever felt. And like, you know, like a really soft baby skin or something. Just, it feels so good. Okay. Anyway, these are beaver. Um, beaver, when you look at beaver's hair um, in, under a microscope, the hairs themselves have like little barbs on them. They're kind of shaped like, like barbed, um, like a fishing hook. So the idea is that um, when they're placed together, they hook together and with the barbs, they become so tightly locked that when you fill up a crown, let's say with water, it takes longer for that water to seep through the beaver than let's say another kind of fur like I don't know, raccoon or, or cat or dog or something, I don't know. But beaver is uh, particularly different for, they live in water and they're, they're meant to get wet, these things. They spend their entire lives swimming in water. They have high oil content. They're very like a spiky kind of oily furs like mink. Uh, and they also, like I said, they, they hold water very well. So this is pure beaver. This hat is custom made, especially for JJ Hat Center. It's part of JJ uh, Stetson's Excellence Quality Series, which I don't remember seeing anything in that series before. You can see it says pure beaver here. Uh, it also says ex made exclusively for JJ Hat Center. That's something you see on like custom hats when they make like a hat for Roy Rogers or something. Or, you know, like if you know somebody at the company and like uh, the, the CEO of the company gets you a hat, he can have this done. You know, people who know people at Stetson get these made exclusively, you know, custom things. So these say made exclusively for JJ. It's a custom job. And um, the High Life is just a beautiful outback. It's based on a style that was very, very popular in Italy by a very famous company that was basically known as the best, the best. And we sold hundreds and hundreds of these hats by this Italian company in like five colors, just hundreds, maybe a dozen a day. And um, then they became unavailable in the United States. So right now they're kind of getting re-released by Stetson, classic American company, in the best felt they can possibly muster up. It's just beautiful. Um, not only is it beaver, it's thick. It's, it's not like a real thin, floppy beaver. This is good, thick, hardy felt. It's got a strong welt, under welt, which also keeps it from getting floppy. It's just, it's hardy. Um, 
the details. This is a really good casual hat for somebody wearing, you know, a leather jacket or an overcoat who doesn't want to look Western, like, you know, like a cowpoke, but also doesn't want to look like um, Clark Kent in like a 1940s fedora. It's somewhat more modern. Now, I know the lighting here is a little weird, but I uh, just wanted to get in front of the Western case. All right, moving on. That's the High Life. The High Life is only available at JJ Hat Center. Um, you can't really get this anywhere else. Maybe eventually you could Google it and it'll be on, you know, other sites and stuff. Next, let's move on. This is the Dune. The Dune is part of the Gun Club series. Gun Club is, okay, so you've got the fedora crown here. More of Western felt. Western felt is way thicker and way stiffer. See how it behaves? The idea is way more stiffener, way thicker. When snow gets on here and water and stuff, it holds its shape. It can hold its weight. Now remember, no matter how waterproof a hat is, it still can lose its shape. It doesn't mean the hat can't lose its shape and look like a potato chip the next day. They do when they're thin and they're soft and you don't take care of them or restore them the right way. So when you buy a hat made of Western felt, it's yes, it's waterproof, but also it doesn't lose its shape. So you don't have to worry so much about hanging it and what, you know, shaping the crown and all this stuff. You, they're bulletproof, these things. So you just take it, you toss it on the junk pile when you come home, you know, your hat goes on top of your coat, on top of your chair or whatever you do, you just, you know, they're very, very strong. The Dune is, um, actually this was invented, this hat was designed by the husband of the lady who owns JJ Hat Center. Um, a uh, fellow named Ed, who uh, designed this a long time ago, and it's made many, many thousands of dollars uh, for Stetson and lots of people. This is a, a beautiful creation. The Dune sells every single day. It's a great hat to wear with like a leather jacket or an overcoat or anything. Um, you're getting a real Stetson, the same felt as like, you know, what the cowpokes are using when they're in rodeos. But you're getting a style that doesn't look like you know, hey, where's your horse? You know, it's just basically kind of a, I don't know, somewhat of an Indiana Jones. A river runs through it. Remember that movie, Robert Redford? It's like that. So you got the fedora, teardrop crown, a western bands, western felt, and a western brim that isn't curled up like a cowboy hat like that. And it, it's flat, the downturn out back style. This is very similar to uh, those Australian hats. There's some very famous hats uh, made in Australia that people also uh, are familiar with. A little similar to that. It's just Stetson's take on it. And here's the dune in Silver Belly. Silver Belly is um, it's like a clear beaver. With, it's kind of got this powder on it. You see the powder coming off it? So when it gets dirty, you take a little sandpaper, you free that powder up, and you just brush the powder around, and it covers up the dirt. So they're really cool, and silver belly hats look good when they get dirty. Um, that's half the fun. It's like, what's his name's hat? Uh, Jimmy Stewart? Is it James Stewart, right? He was the guy who did all the westerns and used the same western hat for his entire career. If you wanted to get like that. Um, these are crushable outbacks. The Stetson Santa Fe. So the, here's a hat if you don't want that hard. Now, now western felt, okay, here's the pros. They never lose their shape. They're strong, they last forever, like decades, lifetimes sometimes, you know, they outlast the wearer. They are tough, okay, they're rainproof, they're everything, all those good things. But they're also heavy, they can be hot, having that leather against your head and stuff. They weigh a lot, they're stiff, uh, they're, they don't break in easily. Um, so somebody who's just wearing a Western influenced or an Outback hat, day to day, might want a crushable hat because these things are, first of all, when you get to a restaurant or you get to your, you know, coffee shop or wherever, you just take it and actually roll it. You could stick it in your, your breast pocket, your gym bag, or, or wherever, just your shopping bag. You could just take it and whatever. These are not going to be affected at all. It, it has zero side effects. I wouldn't be messing with merchandise if I thought it would. Um, it's perfect. Crushable hats are way cheaper. They're about half the price. And you figure you're spending about $100 rather than 200 bucks for like, you know, 
one of these fur felt westerns. These are wool felts. They're light felts, which is the crushable high-tech wool stuff. Uh, they're crushable. They are rainproof. They're American-made. All that good stuff, but they're lighter and they're softer. Santa Fe comes in black, too. Okay, and we have a version of that hat without all the chin strap, without the cowboy schmaltzy band. This is very popular with ladies. They got a lot of ladies who like this hat. It's basically just a plain black outback that's crushable. You could stick it in your, in your pocket. I saw this with tons of guys just to wear with their overcoats or, or you know, whatever, with their leather jackets or even down jackets. It's, uh, people wear these even skiing, I've seen it. It's totally crushable. These are made in New York, actually. You can take these, put them in your pocket. It's like about 110 bucks, zero tax, 110 even. These come all the way up to double extra large. Call this hat the Outback, the crushable Outback, or the Outback hat, maybe. The styling is really nice. Um, it's nondescript. It's not a Western hat. It's not a detective's hat or a private eye or um, Sam's Spade or whatever. It's just a hat, you know, like a, like a leather bag, uh, a flat hat. Um, let's get to the open road. The open road now is like the super popular trendy thing. It's the same brim I'm wearing, a two and a half inch snap brim. So this time, not like the Dune with the fedora crown, they're taking the... Um, this is, they call this not an Outback, but a crossover hat, like an Outback. It's a crossover Western meets dress hat. So here what you're doing is the opposite. You're taking the brim of a fedora, just like mine, a two and a half inch brim with the bound edge, two and a half inch brim, bound edge, snaps up and down in the front and the back, just like mine. Um, but it's Western felt. It's real super heavy. Got the Western band. This is much smaller than a, a cowboy hat. Here's a full out Western cowboy hat, okay? Look at the difference in these things. They're just so completely... Uh, this is really, really big. This is not so much. It's kind of a pretty compact hat. I mean, you know, it's a big hat like what I'm wearing here, but not, not huge. A lot of young people, guys, you know, are sort of skinny like me, they can wear this and it doesn't look huge doesn't look like a cowboy hat costume. It kind of looks, let's put it this way, there are guys that can wear cowboy hats, guys who kind of earn it, you know, they're big enough or they're from Texas. And there are other people who look like they just don't really belong wearing, wearing a Western hat. They're just too small or they're just, you know, not the type. This is that guy. You can take this and you could wear it with like your New York clothing and stuff. and. And it'll mix in really well. It's just got like that cool cowboy hat top, but instead of being this high, it's this high. So it's really laid back. A lot of famous uh, musicians are wearing this now. I know Jeff Tweedy from Wilco has it and a whole bunch of other guys. We get so many requests for this hat, it's just unbelievable. Too many. Um, it's just, we can't keep up with the request. It looks really great. You know, maybe not with my, like, you know, yellow t-shirt, but... It's one of those, lots of guys like it. Um, it's a versatile hat. It's an iconic hat. I believe it was, what was the president that used to wear that? Johnson? LBJ, yeah. He, he wore the Stradaliner with the, uh, with the open road and white one. He used to chomp on a cigar or something, maybe? I'm not much of a historian, and it's a little before my time. I'm born in 66. The Gambler, really cool hat. Now, talk about a hat you have to earn the right to wear. The Gambler. Oh, I was doing Bach for a second. Wrong song. But anyway, this is, this is bad. This is, this is a Western gambler. Take off this Western band and put on a ribbon dress band, this type of band, and it is a Mississippi gambler. Let me see. I'll cover up the band for a second. Rhett Butler, remember? Frank went down on Scarlet. I don't give a damn. So it is a Mississippi and a Western style. It's a Southern gentleman. You could wear this with an overcoat. It looks very fashionable. Uh... This is called the Stetson Royal Flush. This is no joke. Um, 
It is hard as nails, lots of fur here, fur felt. These guys are, it's a 5X, you see all the X's in there. You can see the X's which represent the quality. Remember, anything 4X or above is 100% fur. It's a 3X, it's usually a blend, wool, wool and fur. If it's a 2X, most of the time it's all wool. But uh, generally, at least for stressing, four and up is what you want. A six is like a little bit better. Um, you know, twenty x is a lot better. Thirty x, fifty x, a hundred x get incredibly expensive. Uh, Google it. Try a um, thousand x Stetson Rancher. See what it costs. Look for the thousand x Stetson Rancher, and then look for the five hundred x Stetson Rancher. I forgot what it's called. El Patron, maybe? El Patron. Uh, anyway, it comes with like a big case of, you know, like a crocodile case and then certificates and brushes and all this stuff. And it's $7,000, I think. I'm pretty sure it's seven grand. So we used to sell a couple of those things. I think when we had them, there were a few grand too, maybe 4,000, the one we had. We might have had the 500. Uh, I think it was before the 1000X came out. They had the 100X, they came out with the 500, and, you know, 200, 500, 1000, I think is the best one. Um, they have little diamonds and rubies, some of them, white gold, um, yellow gold, and pink gold on the bands. It, it was amazing. Um, we don't sell them anymore. We go up to like 6X, you know. Basically, they're all the same. They feel a little better, you know, they feel slightly softer. Well, they feel great, you know, but how, how soft does your cowboy hat have to feel? I mean, it's basically to impress your buddies and stuff. I mean, if you are like a Colombian drug lord or somebody like that, Scarface type of dude, um, I don't want to offend you. I actually think that's a, a noble profession. Um, drug lording is probably pretty, uh, well, not noble, but it's... Uh, the busy profession, um, lucrative, but you guys deserve hats too, so um, we sell them to everybody, and it's not a popular model. We did sell a few in the old days. I think the most expensive one we sold was, it was about a $4,000 hat, and we had to sell it at a discount because the very last one we had stayed for like maybe five or seven years, you know. But the 20 axes, the 30 axes, the ones that were like affordable and expensive, they sold pretty well. Um, cowboy hats, people are pretty fanatical about them. It's like guitars or, or anything else, you know, that people get from uh, like hats, you know. Um, they get expensive. Getting back to the gambler. The gambler is a kind of a crossover hat, I guess. It's not a traditional Western, but it is well, it is a traditional Western. It's not your typical Western, but it is a traditional hat that dates way back. I'm sure it has a, uh, a story, you know, the gambler, maybe it's good for playing cards, you know, that's a technical brim or something. But um, getting back to Westerns and Outbacks, here's a hat by Stetson called the Stetson Pawnee. This is part of the Gun Club series, again, like the Dune. Think of the Dune as an Outback hat with, here, let me grab you Dune. Think of the Dune by Stetson as a classic Outback hat done up with an Australian motif, an Outback motif, okay? Very simple. It's done more like a simple dressy kind of, okay, here's the same hat with a Western motif. This one is called the Stetson Pawnee. Um, should be a little down in the front there. The Pawnee, like the Pawnee Indians, is almost identical. The only difference is, is the band, Western band here, more of a dress band or a uh, Australian, a Kubra type band. Different edge, raw edge on the pony, bound edge, a little more polished looking here. So it's like a dress package, a Western package, you know, in the same exact shape. Um, the Stetson Pony is almost sold out. I was going to skip it because they're just about gone. They disappeared at Christmas time. But I'm sure we're going to get more and we'll have more. So it is something we don't have right now, but like two or three pieces left. 
Okay, getting back to Outback and Westerns. Um, if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, come on, um, ask me questions, come into JJ's or give us a call. JJ Hat Center, uh, www.jjhatcenter.com. We are the oldest hat shop around in New York, at least. Uh, we're open to 1911. 1911, I'm here since 94. And um, I know a thing or two about hats. I don't know everything. Um, I'm not a hat maker, but I can definitely help you uh, find the right hat. That's something I do uh, every day. So if you are interested in getting a hat and you're just a little confused, you don't know where to start, watch a bunch of my videos. Um, I think that will help. Choosing a hat is something I have probably 10 or 20 videos on. Um, I'd say more. So, you know, watch some of those and look at some of the styles I pull out and, um, you know, even look at some of the styles in the background. You might see something interesting. And any questions, use the comments here or come by the shop at 310 Fifth Avenue, Manhattan, between 31st and 32nd Street, right underneath the Empire State Building. So if you see the Empire State Building, just uh, go to Fifth Avenue. We're right there, like underneath. You look up, uh, there's Empire. Look down, that's us, between 31st and 32nd. So, going home is a long day. Everybody?